God bless you all. God bless you to have the authentic confession toward Jesus our Lord. The time you and I will see the true power and authority even to the people of eternity. Amen. As you know, it is a very natural process for people who are born again and have the eternal life to have hearts to join, to join the ministries for the kingdom of God and the gospel of Jesus Christ with joyfulness. The ministries are not only in the church ministries, but also in our daily lives, driving to the will of God and His commission. So we can say that everyone who believes in Jesus Christ is a worker of God, a minister. In this ministry, we must humbly devote ourselves to our given roles and responsibilities, free from any sense of rivalry that results in negative competition towards one another. And we must boldly jump into paradoxical truth. At this moment of truth, the joy gained from having eternal life spreads and paints our personalities. And this joy is complete in our lives as well as in our souls. We have a perfect example of someone who was filled with this joy. Yes, John the Baptist. His disciples, actually his disciples, was not just a learner, but a worker with John the Baptist. They, they were filled with rivalry and envy, resulting the ministry of Jesus. But John the Baptist never wavered by his disciples around him, the workers around him. Rather, he said what his, what his identity, and identity and duties is. He said, the one who takes the bride is the groom. Groom alone cannot share, only bridegroom. Jesus is the only bridegroom who takes the church, believers. There's no sharing. Only Jesus can take his bride, the church. He said like that. And also he continued to say, I am a friend of the groom. In those days, the uh, the friend of the bridegroom is kind of, is, 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 is look like the best man in American culture, but it's very different than a best man in these days. In those days, a friend of bridegroom charged the uh, wedding ceremony, and he checked up the bride's preparation. And also, this is a very special part, when bride go to when bride goes to the uh, bridegroom's house from her father's house at the time a friend of bridegroom must escort escort the bride publicly there's a very important duty for a fr friend of bride bridegroom and finally when the bride gets the uh, husband's house. At that time, the bridegroom, the groom said, hey, my bride, this is a house we're going to live together. At that time when a friend, the friend of bridegroom, listened to the groom's voice like that, he rejoiced greatly. Why? Because he has done his job, his duty. John the Baptist said, this joy of mine, is fulfilled, complete in my life. I love this guy. That is the, it, this, this attitude is 
through minister's attitude. This is true humility. This is humility. And to top it off, John the Baptist left the words that everyone who dedicates oneself for the ministry should honor. He must increase. I must decrease. Jesus must become greater. I must become less. That's the paradoxical truth. He boldly jumped into this paradoxical truth. And with no doubt, he is the greatest among all who were born from women. Jesus said, Jesus confirmed like this. All professors of the Old Testament prophesied the arrival of Jesus Christ. But John the Baptist is the first and only prophet who pointed Jesus the Christ directly. And finally, until this, actually, it is why you and I must decrease, right? And from today's scripture, but today's scripture, why Jesus must increase. Today's scripture tells about that. Today's scripture, the third part of closes with John's explaining why Jesus must become greater. What enables us to be filled with this joy of a mind like John the Baptist? Why must I decrease, you decrease, and become less, while Jesus must increase and become greater? Because of Jesus' uniqueness. There's a Jesus' uniqueness. Actually, the scripture tells us about so-called Christolo Christology, Christology. Who's the Christ? What is the uniqueness of Jesus? This is the today message we have to listen to together. Number one, Jesus is the only one who comes from above. The reason why Jesus must become greater is because Jesus is the only one who comes from above, from the heaven. Let's go back to the scripture, 31. Verse 31. He who comes from above is above all. He who is of the earth belongs to the earth and speaks in an earthly way. He who comes from heaven is above all. He bears witness to what he has seen and heard, yet no one receives his testimony. As you know, every single person of us were born of this earth. We belong to the earth. No one's an exception to this. I was born in Incheon, South Korea, and immigrated to Canada, and I come from Canada, and I live in Tacoma. Same to you. Even heroes in the Bible, even John the Baptist, the somebody you respect, and pastor, and congregations, there's no exception. We are from the earth. Only Jesus is from the heaven. Yes, he grew up in Nazareth, and he, he, was birth, he, 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 he has birth in Bethlehem. But before that, he came from the heaven. You and I just think about earthly one. Because we from the earth. It doesn't mean we always think about the earthly success or secular prosperity. Even though we devote God's kingdom and his words and we always dedicate for the ministries for God. That is also belong to the earth. That means we cannot be perfect ministers. We cannot do perfect ministries. What, what we are doing is just in part, not full, because we belong this earth. I work 
for God for just this generation. I cannot work for past generation or future generation. This generation. I can ministry just God commit me in part, not everything. So we cannot know everything. But Jesus knows everything. Why? Because he comes from the heaven and he has seen and he has heard. He witnessed, he bear witness to what he has seen and we what he has seen and heard. Because he is the Son of God, which means God. So the only Jesus comes from the above the heaven. That's why he always increase. He must increase and I must decrease. The book of Hebrews says about it like this. Look at Hebrews chapter 1, verse 1 through 3. Long ago, and many times and many ways, God spoke to our fathers by the prophet. Yes, God spoke to people in Old Testament by the, through the prophet, by the prophets. But at that time, God didn't give whole things to one prophet. God gives this part to this prophet, and that part is that, that part is that prophet. They just understand partly. They just understand God's words in part, not everything. What they do great job is they just deliver what they heard from God, even though it is in part. But what happened? But, verse 2, in these last days, he had spoken to us by his son. By his son. Who is the son? Whom he appointed the heir of all things. Through whom also he created the world. God created the world by his word. The word is Jesus Christ. And also Jesus, verse 3, he is the radiance of glory of God and the exact imprint of his nature. We cannot see God's glory. We cannot see God's nature. But when Jesus came in, his fle in, in flesh, we can see the radiance of God's glory. We can see the exact imprint of God's nature. Why? He's come from, he comes from the heaven. And he upholds the universe by the word of his power. Yes, Jesus is creator. And he is a holder for this universe. And then after making purification for sins, yes, to uphold this universe, the main point is wash, to wash our sins away. So that's why he was on the cross and he gives us blood and wash our sins. To uphold the universe, including us. Only Jesus can do it because he's come from, he comes from heaven. And then what happened? He sat down at the right hand of majesty on high. If I make a short story, the Christ in the heaven came to the world. And he ministered as the Christ in this world. And after finishing his ministry, he ascended the heaven as the Christ, that place where, where he belonged. Only Jesus came from the heaven and work God's ministry in this world and ascend the heaven where he belonged originally. Only Jesus. There is no one like this except only Jesus. Jesus. Therefore, if this faith is confessed from your lips with clarity and certainty, you have witnessed the arrival and presence of Jesus Christ in your ministry. The company of one above all, and this is the greatest joy in your life journey. That is our joy. That is eternal joy. And who is Jesus? What is his uniqueness? Number two, Jesus is the only true proof of God's authenticity. He is the only true proof of God's authenticity. 
Only Jesus is the one who comes from heaven and testifies divine deeds as the one who stands above all. Every prophet on earth, in their own time, prophesied the tiny portions they managed to see and hear, like me and like you. And when the unique Son of God finally came, he finished it, the deed and perfected it all. But, unfortunately, people rejected Jesus' testimony. However, however, somebody who received this, this, his, his testimony, look at the verse 33. Let's back to the scripture again. Whoever receives his testimony, Jesus' testimony, sets his seal to this, that God is true. Uh, this, this is a little bit hard to understand, but that means like that. Those who accept the testimony of Jesus have accepted and acknowledged the sincerity and truthfulness of God. Why? Because Verse 34 says like that, cause for he whom God has sent utters the words of God. Why? Because for he gives the spirit without measure. What Jesus did in his flesh when he was in flesh, he accomplished the Old Testament. That means the prophecy God has had given to the world. Jesus accomplished God's word in his life and in his words. And among them, a very important part is the, about the Holy Spirit. As I told you a few weeks ago, a few weeks ago the, when you're born in the word and the spirit, that is the accomplishment of, of the uh, Ezekiel's prophecy, right? Like that, through Jesus' ministry, Holy Spirit is filled with us. We can be filled with the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit come to us. Holy Spirit can reside in us through Jesus' ministry. So that when we see Jesus and when we believe in Jesus' testimony, at the time, we can certify, we can confirm that God's word is true. God is faithful when we believe in Jesus' testimony only. But Jewish people in the John, the Gospel, John, uh, Gospel of John, they said, we believe true God, but we cannot accept Jesus' testimony. That's a lie. They are, they are liars. You know, the faith is not just understand, oh yeah, there is a God, in the universe, maybe, maybe not. Oh, yes, uh, uh, not maybe, maybe not. I believe, I believe there's God. But I don't accept Jesus' testimony. That's not the faith. Our faith is only through believing in Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's so touchable. <clears throat> Our faith is only by believing in Jesus Christ. Christ. That is true faith. At that time, we can believe our Father God is a very faithful God. Because through Jesus Christ, God accomplished, fulfilled His promise. Only through Jesus. So that when He say, okay, we accept Jesus' testimony at that time, we can certify, yes, God is so True, God is so faithful in my life. Only Jesus can do it. Only through Jesus we can confirm God is true. God is true. If you don't accept Jesus, Jesus' testimony, it is to make God liar. First John chapter 5, verse 3 says like that. If we have faith in God's Son, we have believed what God has said, right? Of course. But if we don't believe what God has said about his son, it's the same as calling God a liar. 
The testimony of God is the testimony of His only unique Son, Jesus Christ. The Lord God gave us eternal life, that the life is within Jesus Christ. There is life in Jesus, and only, only in Jesus. Not in Jewish religion. Not in any other religion. Not in just theist, theist, not atheist, theist belief. Only in Jesus Christ. So faith is about believing in the presence and existence of God. To claim a faith in God without accepting that Jesus is the only one who has everlasting life in him is to turn God into liar. The Lord is truthful and without deceit. Our Father God cannot lie. If a person is turning God into a liar, she or he is a liar. And people like that always, that people always want to reveal themselves. They have to be the groom of the ceremony, the wedding ceremony, and they attempt to steal the bride away. Their intention is to replace and rob Jesus' position. The sin cannot be forgiven. But my brothers and sisters, we can never allow ourselves to fall to that level. Why? Because we know that Jesus is the only one who comes from heaven, the Messiah, Christ. He is only have eternal life. He is only our king. He is only our bridegroom. Jesus is the Lord. Jesus is the only one who deserves to be praised and glorified. I agree. Say amen. amen. And who is Jesus? Why is Jesus uniqueness? Number three, Jesus is the only one who received all power and authority. Only Jesus received the power and authority to govern above all the universe. The universe from the Heavenly Father. There is no other true king or governor except our Lord Jesus. The scripture, verse 35, says like that. The Father loves the Son and has given all things into his hand. Yes, the chain of relationship that connects the Father and the Son is always love. Love, eternal love. In the will of the Father, all of creation was given to the Son Christ Jesus. Jesus came from above, and for the sake of holding the creation together and saved, he died on the cross and was resurrected, and ascended back to his original place. And on his throne, our Lord, Father, our Lord Jesus governs over all creation. It was the plan of our Heavenly Father God. But you know what? Here, there is an ostriking plan that reserved for us. Jesus is the only one who came from the Heavenly Kingdom, the Creator, and the one who holds us and absolves our sins. He is the one true proof of the God's truthfulness and the one who received all authority. And through Jesus, you and I also have become a being of remarkable greatness, precious in God's eyes. That is the church, Jesus' body. The book of Ephesians says, like, says about it like this. Look at the book of Ephesians, chapter 1, verse 20 through 23. That he worked in Christ. God, the Father, worked in Christ. 
when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places. I hope you understand this verse because I have told you about this. And 21, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, dominion and above every name that is named, not only in this age but also in the one to come. And he put all things under Jesus' feet and gave Jesus as head of all things to the church. You know what? Here, there's uncontainable joyfulness for, ours, for us. And the Bible says 23, which is his body. Yes, church, you and I, Jesus' body, which means the fullness of him who fills all in all. Our Lord Jesus is the one who fills all in all. And you and I as church, we are fullness of Jesus Christ who fills all in all. It's amazing grace. Through Jesus Christ, because our head is glorified, our head is honored, our head is the Lord of this universe, His body is also glorified and honored and governed all universe by His power, Jesus' power, Jesus' authority. That's you and my, you are and my story. That's not other story. Your story and my story. Because Jesus is our bridegroom. Because Jesus is our head. Because Jesus is our Lord. Don't hesitate to confess about it in your life. Even though you are in some situation in COVID-19 and we are afraid, we are worried about the second wave, but don't worry about anything. Just be careful. But you have to remember we are his body. We are fullness of Jesus who fills all in all. God and our Lord Jesus glorifies us like that. That's why we don't hesitate to decrease. Because there is paradoxical truth. Like John the Baptist, even though we have devoted for the kingdom of God and the gospel of Jesus Christ, we are willing to. No, we must become less. Because we are just human beings. But to them, to them who confess I must decrease. I must become less. And only Jesus must increase. Only Jesus must become greater. God exalt them as Jesus' body. So then what should we do? That's why we must believe in Jesus Christ. At the time we can have Eternal life. That's why today's scripture, last scripture says like that. Look at the 36th today's scripture. Whoever believes in Son has eternal life. Whoever does not obey the Son shall not see life, but the rest of God remains on him. What is to believe in the Son? That is to obey. Our, our Jesus testimony. What is, what, is, what is his testimony today? Yes, even though we have devoted the full kingdom of God, I must decrease and he must increase. That's his commandment today. We must obey that. At that time, you will find out in your life journey that God exalted you as Jesus' body.
And you will find out you have the power and authority of Jesus because you are his body. Because you are his bride. Let us pray. Father God, thank you for giving us your word today. Thank you for giving us understanding about spiritual words. We didn't know it. We didn't care about it. But because we are born again and we are born of the Spirit, we care about this truth. And we always pursue this truth. Yes, Father, Jesus must increase and I must decrease. Only Jesus must become greater and we must become less. And also, Father God, after being less, we want to glorify you. We want to praise you with our brothers and sisters who we invited to this church and who we uh, teaches, t- uh, taught God's words. The time we understand we can be the church. We can be the body of Christ. To glorify your son and you and praise you and about your works and about the Lamb of God. Yes, Father, that's who we are. We are Jesus' bride, Jesus' body. We want to jump into this paradoxical truth. Father, please help us to remind. Only Jesus comes from heaven. And only Jesus is true proof of God's authenticity. And only Jesus is the king governs and rules this universe. Let us remind this truth all the time. We know, Father, we know that at the time We can have the authority and power and strength of our head, Jesus, because we are his body. Let us experience this truth in our life journey. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen.